Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to your very own unlock guide to Dragon's Teeth. I'm of course talking about all of the new features and weapons that are going to be available in this DLC, and I thought I'd put together a little video just before the DLC comes out. I made this video on the Monday, and it comes out on the Tuesday, just so you guys can get straight into the DLC and know exactly how to unlock all of these weapons and gadgets. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so let's start with the Assault class. For Dragon's Teeth, you're going to get access to the Bulldog Assault Rifle. This thing packs an absolute punch and is great for hitting the medium and long range targets. 700 rounds per minute and a higher damage model, very similar to the Scar H. For this assignment, there's not a huge amount for you to do. First of all, there are a set of sort of three tick boxes that you have to have completed. You basically have to be ranked 10, and if you're not ranked 10 by now, then what the hell have you been doing for the last 10 months? You need to have played a Dragon's Teeth map by that point, and you need to obviously have access to the Dragon's Teeth DLC. The actual requirements for unlocking the weapon, while on foot, playing as Assault, you need to kill 10 support enemies, 10 engineer enemies, and 10 recon enemies. So really, you need to kill 30 players, each of which need to be 10 support, 10 engineer, and 10 recon. And all of that needs to be done while you're playing the Assault class, which is only possible when using the Bulldog because you, you can't use it with any other class. So as I said, this one's not actually that difficult to unlock and there'll be a link in the description to my weapon review of all of these videos so you can check out exactly what they look like and what they feel like, but this thing packs a punch and you'll really like it. Moving along, we're now going to the Engineer class and we're looking at the MPX PDW or submachine gun or however you really want to call it, it doesn't really make any difference. But again, this is a great weapon, I really enjoyed using it in the CTE servers and it's great at close range, it's got really good hip fire accuracy, you're slightly hindered by the fact that you've only got 26 bullets in a magazine, but if you can learn to hip fire properly and you're at close range, you may not notice those 5 bullets going missing. This is not something to be used at long range though, so bear that in mind. To unlock this weapon, you need to get 2 PDW ribbons, link 10 points in the new chain link game mode, and get squad order followed 10 times. So this one is a little bit harder to get. The first one, the two PDW ribbons, you don't even need to worry about that. Just use the weapon, get some kills, you get that in no time. The 10 links in chain link, capture 10 of the points in chain link. That's all you need to do. And once you've done that, then you get that part unlocked. <laughs> and get squad order followed 10 times. That's when the squad leader sets an objective. And if you follow that objective and get points for it, that will start to rank up for you. So basically, if your squad leader is pointing at the chain link objectives and you end up going and taking those, then you're going to find this assignment really easy. Now we're with the Recon class and the CS5 Macmillan Sniper Rifle, which is probably my favourite weapon uh, in this DLC. It's great at close quarters combat, it comes equipped with a silencer to start with, so it really is for close quarters to medium range combat. Really fits that urban scene, it's very portable, it's got a good rate of fire, but if you're using it for anything longer than around 150 metres, you're going to have to start to calculate for a lot of bullet drop. But to unlock the sniper, you need to get two sniper rifle ribbons, 10 radio beacon spawns, and 20 spot assists. Again, this is a really easy assignment. Just play the sniper class, and you'll get this extremely quickly. It's not like it takes a lot of effort to use the sniper and kill people, it doesn't take a lot of effort for you to put down a spawn beacon, and it certainly doesn't take a lot of effort to push the spot button and get a few assists. This sniper could not be any easier to unlock, and I think you'll really enjoy it once you get it in your hands. Next, we're looking at the pistols, and first up we have the Unica 6. This is probably my least favourite weapon in the Dragon's Teeth DLC. To me, it just feels like another revolver. It doesn't feel like it really has much more place than the SW40 did, but I just don't think it really works as well. It hasn't got quite as high fire rate, it's got very very low damage at range, so really this thing is only very good at close quarters. But if you do want to unlock it, all you need to do is activate the floodgates on Sunken Dragon, which is one of the new maps in the DLC, and get 5 kills while swimming. So if you didn't know, in Battlefield 4 you can get your secondary weapon out whilst you're swimming in the water, so all you need to do is just get out a pistol and shoot somebody on the land or shoot somebody in front of you 5 times, and if you go onto Flood Zone, that's not exactly difficult to do. And the final 
weapon, I suppose you could call it, because the other ones aren't really sort of attacking weapons. But this one is the Deagle. And if it wasn't for the CS5 sniper rifle, this would have been the best weapon in the DLC. I still think it's an absolutely amazing sidearm. It's got devastating, deadly, deadly, amazing damage. And you can be really accurate at long range with it as well. It's got a .44 bullet in there, so it is extremely powerful. And it's on par with the Magnum revolver in terms of damage. So if you like having a heavy hit inside, sidearm but you want a cartridge fed one as well you used to have the m1911 for that well the deagle just stepped in front of it the way you unlock this weapon though is slightly different you have to have completed the unica 6 assignment before you can get access to the deagle 44 and whilst you're doing that once you've unlocked the unica 6 you need to get 20 headshots with it I think that there was a reason behind the Deagle being slightly more powerful than the other handguns. It is kind of like a, a standout weapon to me in this game. So they've made it a little bit harder for you to do. But if you're competent with a pistol, just jump into a pistols only server. You'll get those 20 headshots in no time. And then the Deagle will be all yours. And to finish off, we'll look at the two new pieces of equipment that you can use in the Dragon's Teeth DLC. First of all, this is the Ballistic Shield. Um, had a bit of controversy coming into Dragon's Teeth, but it looks as if they've balanced it correctly. It now takes two hits to kill somebody with this thing, because you can use it as a melee weapon as well, which is quite cool. But to unlock it, you need to get five saviour kills, which basically means if someone's shooting at your friendly player and you end up killing that enemy, that's a saviour kill. You need to get 20 suppression assists, which is really easy to do with the support class, which is the one you get to use the ballistic shield with, and then destroy three explosives. So I don't know if they're your own explosives or if they have to be the enemy team's explosives, but you could just sort of blow up some mines or that are on the enemy team, or maybe you could just use your own C4, and maybe that's how you do it. I'm not too sure yet. But that is how you unlock the Ballistic Shield. It is fun to use, but I don't really know how much of a place it's going to have in the DLC. We do know it's going to be urban combat though, so it could fit in very well. And finally, I wanted to draw your attention to this assignment, Remote Operator, because it includes the new gadget, the RAW, which is a remote controlled sort of Wally bot, basically. It's like an overpowered EOD bot. And you can't use it as an equipment piece on your soldier. You sort of pick it up as one of the battle weapons that you can use on the maps. A bit like the 50 cal sniper rifle that you can pick up on certain maps. So to unlock this dog tag, which doesn't seem like a very good prize considering what you have to do to get it, you need to destroy a vehicle with the EOD bot. You need to get five kills with that new raw sort of remote control thing. You need to get 10 kills with a mortar, and everyone's going to hate you for that. And then you need to get 20 targets with the MAV, which all in all isn't too difficult to do, but probably will take a little bit of time. I don't really think that the reward is really worth all the time you put in, but you do have an impetus to go and use that new Wally Bot EOD overpowered thing, and it, it seems really cool. So, that's about it for Dragon's Teeth weapons and how to unlock them. The DLC comes out very soon, so make sure you check back to this video if you're not sure how to uh, unlock any of the weapons. And I will leave links in the description to all the weapon reviews I've done for Dragon's Teeth so far, and I'll leave a couple on the outro as well. But if you enjoyed this video today, make sure you hit that like button and leave all your comments down below about the Dragon's Teeth DLC. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.